The world between worlds is the key to everything. We are sure of it. In Ahsoka so far, we have been introduced to a lot of fantastical concepts, but the one that it is all building up to is the involvement of the world between worlds, a place that was introduced in Star Wars Rebels, and something that has been confirmed to be expanded upon in Ahsoka. This strange dimension has been the topic of many speculations, as we don't entirely understand the world and what its purpose really is or how it was created. However, what can't be denied is its innate importance to the overall mythos and what it means whenever someone gets their hands on it. It could essentially be the ultimate power in the galaxy. According to Dave Filoni, it is the key to unimaginable power. There are many unanswered questions about this, which we hope to discuss and break down today, and perhaps by doing so, we will begin to uncloud the image and the future of the Ahsoka series, and exactly why we believe that Balin and Shin need the world between worlds, and that this is the power that is unimaginable that they seek. But first though, what exactly is the world between worlds? This is a separate dimension which can only be accessed through unique methods in the Force. So far, we only know of two ways to access and enter the realm itself. One of those ways, though, is currently incomplete. In the Star Wars Rebels series, Ezra encounters a Jedi temple on Lothal, a temple that the Empire was trying to get their hands on and access to. The secret to the temple lied in the paintings on the outside, which depicted the ones of Mortis surrounded by the symbols of the Lothwolves. With the help from Sabine, Ezra managed to use the Force to influence this painting, causing the painting to change and the Lothwolves to run in a circle, thus creating the portal that could access the world between worlds. The symbolism of the ones of Mortis is heavily tied to the world between worlds, as the hand of the daughter in the painting is what actually opens the pathway, and the fist of the sun closes it back up. This may perhaps indicate that the Ones had something to do with the creation of this mysterious realm, or perhaps for a time they were stewards of it. It is entirely possible that the world between worlds has existed prior to the Ones. Unfortunately though, nothing about the timeline has been confirmed. Within the dimension is a place outside of time and space itself, and this is in fact the very place where all of time and space can be accessed, and perhaps even controlled. Filled with portals and gateways that connect to various points on the galactic timeline, the world between worlds is an oddity the likes of which we have never seen before. It can be surmised that it runs purely off of the Force, since the Force is formless and timeless, omnipresent in every era. Perhaps stepping into the world between worlds is akin to stepping into the Force itself. But again, we do not know the true nature of the realm, but what Ezra did while he was inside this place caused drastic changes in the timeline if although at the time they seemed subtle. Ezra went to a doorway which showed the moment that Ahsoka should have died in the collapse of the Sith Temple on Malachor during her duel with her former master, Vader. Ezra, in his despair, reaches out to the portal and pulls Ahsoka back out of this moment in time and into the world between worlds. Ahsoka is disoriented and confused, but quickly comes to understand what this place was. Ezra desires to use it in order to save Kanan, but Ahsoka warns him not to, as influencing the timeline could have drastic consequences, even wrought destruction. Case in point, if Ezra were to save Kanan, then what Kanan sacrificed himself for would not happen. The ghost crew would have all died. During their excursion, Ahsoka encourages Ezra to go back through the gateway from whence he came, and that she should do the same so as to not disrupt the timeline. At that point, one of the doorways open, and we see Darth Sidious conducting a Sith ritual. Only he can only see into the world between worlds, not actually enter through the gateway. Using the fires of his alchemy, Sidious tries to reach into the dimension and capture Ahsoka and Ezra. Curiously though, it is made clear that he is unable to actually enter the dimension himself and step through the doorway, since he needs the Jedi Temple on Lothal in order to do that. Ezra and Ahsoka manage to escape through their respective portals, and all is well as far as we know. The temple collapses on Lothal afterwards, and Ahsoka is back to life in her original timeline. Like we said earlier, there are two ways to access the world between worlds though, but one of them is incomplete. Only the Lothal temple granted immediate and perfect entry, but whatever Sidious's ritual was, opened only a small window one that only allowed the Force's influence in rather than a physical person and physical matter. It was said that Sidious used a special place on Coruscant to conduct this ritual and sent his dark alchemical flames into the dimension to do his bidding. But even though Sidious can open a small window into the dimension, he could not enter it completely. 
but he does try again by having Thrawn recover an archway and a part of the corridor from the Jedi Temple ruins. It was put back together, and Palpatine attempted to manipulate Ezra into opening the doorway again on Thrawn's ship. This actually almost worked, but Ezra resisted the temptation to see his parents again and made sure to completely destroy the archway on Thrawn's ship. Reducing it to rubble, Palpatine's desire for the world between worlds is something that has left a mystery. Minister Varys Hyden, the Imperial acolyte that Palpatine puts on the job to research the temple, mentions that whoever has control over the world between worlds basically has control over the entire universe itself, since that would mean that they could now access any point in space or time and change it. According to the official databank entry on StarWars.com, the world between worlds would have granted Palpatine unimaginable power, which is a phrase that is suspiciously familiar to our years. In the new Ahsoka show, this is the dialogue. What happens when we find Thrawn? Shin asks warily. For some, war. For others, a new beginning, responds Balin in a far-off tone. And for us, Shin asks again, to which Balin replies with the eyes to his sky. Power, such as you have never dreamed. These lines invoke the idea that Balin perhaps may intend to strike an alliance with Thrawn, which would gain him access to military power and influence over a planet or system. But we don't believe that this is in fact the truth, or that this is the specific place that Balin desires to command. Rather, we believe that Balin wants to access the world between worlds and command a specific point in time. We are under the fierce suspicion that Balin desires to use the ruins of the Lothal Jedi Temple Archway on the Chimera to access the world between worlds. How would he do this? We aren't entirely sure. It hasn't been proven or disproven whether the portal will still work if once it is rebuilt from the ruin. But what we do know is that Balin and Shin have unimaginable power that they seek and that it is with Thrawn. But so too are the ruins of the Lothal Temple, an access to this mysterious and powerful realm that wields a power as such that no one has seen. The second time, the portal didn't need the entire temple to work, as Thrawn was able to just have the archway intact on his ship in order to make the portal function. There's nothing to say that simply rebuilding this archway with the original pieces wouldn't be the key to unlocking the world between worlds again. In fact, there is a possibility that either the arch is already rebuilt, or a piece of it is being used. Let's remember what Morgan Elsbeth said. Thrawn calls to me across time and space. For a while, we have been quite stumped on what this meant, or how this was possible. Thrawn is not Force-sensitive, so how is he doing this? Perhaps this is the answer. What if Thrawn managed to use a piece of the archway like a sending stone? If perhaps he could still access the power, he could at least send messages to someone by opening a small window, much like Palpatine did. Again, how he does this is anyone's guess, but perhaps he uses Ezra's power somehow. But either way, all the evidence is there to suggest that the archway is still a viable option for use and access to the realm. But why specifically does Balin want this, and what does it offer him? We have a few options. It's always possible that Balin desires to become incredibly powerful and rule over others. Perhaps he will travel back to some point after the Jedi Purge and try to kill Vader and Palpatine so that he could take over as the new Emperor of the Galaxy, rid the galaxy of the Sith's tyranny. Our other guess has to do with his soft spot for the Jedi. Perhaps he is going back to attempt to prevent Order 66 from ever happening. His goals lie all on his own, and perhaps he is simply using Morgan and Thrawn, and he plans to betray them in the future to acquire the Archway for himself. It's at that point that he may offer for Ahsoka to join him. It would only make sense, as their goals should seemingly align. Or do they? Ahsoka will not be willing to join him, and will still do everything in her power to prevent him from using the world between worlds, because simply, she knows of the dangers. Ahsoka will be forced to accept that Anakin Skywalker's turn to the dark side was not her fault, but was in fact solely Anakin's, and being faced with the choice to undo this and deciding not to will be her ultimate character arc. What we need to remember is the world between worlds doesn't operate like a glorified time machine, contrary to popular belief. The realm has set rules and dire consequences. We saw a few of those rules exemplified when Ezra took Ahsoka out of this moment in time. She warned Ezra that she had to go back to where she came from, and he had to as well. Neither of them could exit out of any other portal than the ones of which they entered. This was something that Ahsoka insisted on, even when they were both in danger from Palpatine's fire. 
The biggest reason is that any change or alteration to the timeline would have untold chaos in the form of entire timeline erasing. Dave Filoni himself explained that although the world between worlds was an access to unimaginable power, it is also a way towards unimaginable destruction. Had Ezra taken Kanan out of this point in time, he would have pulled into a reality where the Ghost crew no longer existed. That entire timeline that we know would have been completely erased. But beyond this, it would cause cracks or a chain reaction throughout all of time and space. It could potentially have ended the universe. We don't exactly know the greater details of how this might happen, but what we do know is that it cannot happen. When you enter the world between worlds, you must obey the rules. Perhaps Palpatine knew the rules and would have worked within them to secure power that others had not, using the dimension to further his goals. Or perhaps he would have inadvertently destroyed the entire galaxy. But anyway, my friends, this is what we know of the world between worlds, and this is why we believe that Balin seeks Thrawn in another galaxy. This is the unimaginable power that we believe that Balin seeks. As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed our theory, reach out with the Force and crush that like and subscribe button. It is your destiny.